Welcome to another episode of YLG Canada Immigration Podcast, where all your immigration questions will be answered by an experienced immigration lawyer. My name is Ryan, and today we continue talking about the Startup Visa Program. Afshid, you mentioned that the wait time could be anywhere between 12 to 16 months, right? In, in the questions we received, some people ask, how would it be possible if they wanted to move to Canada earlier or before this wait time? Great question. For uh, immigration office under startup visa program provides an option which says uh, you can get a work permit under the startup visa and the processing time for the work permit is sometimes it's even less than three months. Okay and then uh, can you apply for that before you have already got this letter of support from the designated organization? If you have received a commitment certificate and letter of support issued by those uh, designated organizations, then you can apply for work permit. And a good point is, it's not mandatory to have a PR application first. Okay, okay. For a PR, you need IELTS, right? But for work permit, you don't need. But this letter of support is valid only for six months. So if you get letter of support, you have time, like the window will close in six months. Okay. So you need to apply for the PR under the startup visa program before window is closed. So uh, for the work permit, I would like to also mention something. The work permit is under international mobility program, which is uh, LMIA exemption. The LMIA is a labor market impact assessment. Any company in Canada or any employer in Canada, if they want to hire a foreign worker, they must get an LMIA. But there is a list of LMIA exempted work permits. And one of them is uh, section 205, which is under significant benefit. And the applicant under a startup visa program fall under this category. So that's why the processing is too fast mm -hmm. because the LMI exemption can get, uh, you can get it in like a few hours. Wow. Even if you are in, in Canada, for example, let's say you are in Canada under visitor visa, right? And then you have the idea, you figured, okay, I have this, I have this patent. And then I have, I have a whole thing. Do I need leave the country or not? And then it said the answer is you can stay. And then you can ask for change of status and get the work permit, stay and work on a project. There are some other requirements such as you must be the essential person uh, inside the business plan. So it's not for everyone. You remember I said there is a, like a pyramid, one is on top and then there are other people. The essential is the one on the top. Only the main person. So that person can apply for, for work permit, not others, not everyone. And one more thing is, if you apply for this, if you get the work permit, because you are in Canada, you have to do everything to show I'm doing my best to run this business based on what I have. So it's not getting a work permit, leave a country and leave your, uh, your family behind in Canada and use uh, the facility of a Canadian government and then while you are not here or you are not working on a project. So if you get uh, a letter of support from a designated organization in Ontario, and then you need to do, uh, you need to stay in Ontario and you need to run the business. One more thing is, if you get a work permit as a main applicant, your spouse, your wife can also, or husband can also get a work permit which is open work permit. And uh, so the family member or everybody can stay here, work and, or the child can go to the school without paying international uh, fees. Okay, and in terms of uh, 
the expenses? But for the expenses, there are three. One, there, there is a fee for the lawyer, for example, a retainer fee. And uh, it depends on the experience, uh, kind of license, is a lawyer or immigration consultant or is nobody. Sometimes there are, you know, in this market, um, uh, they don't have a license, but they claim I have, we have connections or we have some other thing. Okay, like phony lawyers. Oh my God. So uh, it depends, depend on what type of person you are dealing with. So the retainer fee, retainer fee is different. So that's one part. And the second part is, as you recall, I said uh, you need a professional to develop or to work on your idea. To make it more persuasive, yeah. Yes, exactly. So there is a fee about that part too. I mean, uh, it again depends on how good your idea is. Mm-hmm. Is it a finished uh, project or is it just the start? Is just the idea? Do you have any product in your hand? Have you sell anything before? Did you make any revenue before? That's the second part of the fee. Then there is a government fee for immigration application. And uh, the fee is not, not that much, uh, really, because, uh, for example, it's, it's about $2,000 for the main applicant and then 1000 something for the spouse and the less for the child. In total, maybe cost you about 5000 for the application fee part, depending on your family size. Uh, but the main fee it will be for uh, third-party professionals that can help you uh, to build your uh, innovative idea and then the retainer fee. For the retainer fee, I don't want to uh, sell myself to you, but the point is if you deal with immigration lawyer, if anything goes wrong during immigration process in immigration office, and your file after you had uh, the letter of support if anything goes wrong and then you got refusal the lawyer can uh, do the judicial review to the federal court and this is uh, for someone who who's licensed by the law society as a lawyer not as a paralegal or immigration consultant they cannot do it yeah sounds like a lot of money but this is money well spent right yeah i mean it definitely lawyer charge you uh, more than immigration consultant or uh, or, or it, it cannot be uh, true all the time. Some I know some immigration consultants charge their, their retainer fee even higher than like a double to the lawyer, but uh, it's kind of marketing tool for them, how they can convince people to, to get the higher uh, retainer fee, even higher than the lawyer. You are listening to YLG Podcast with Afshin Yazdani exploring the latest news, tips, and strategies about immigration to Canada. Before we wrap up, Afshin, is there anything else you think we should know? I like to emphasize one one thing. A startup visa, if you have an idea to go and live in Quebec City or Montreal or province of the Quebec, this is not the good the right program for you because the program says you cannot go. Uh, uh, under this program and live in Quebec. Overall, how do you evaluate this program considering all the pros and cons? Uh, I think the program is good. Again, it depends on your intention, real intention. If you want to get the PR, just the PR, or you really want to become an uh, entrepreneur in this country, there are uh, some uh, advantages to this program, such as processing time. Processing time is very fast compared to any other program. For example, if you if you go under PMP program, provincial nominees program, uh, each stage is like you're getting a nomination from the province and then apply for work permit and then apply for a PR. Usually it's about like four years. And then uh, if you go under in Quebec investor program would be the same. Uh, I'm talking about immigration program, right? I'm not saying about visitor visa, student visa or work permit. 
it's it's about immigration immigrating to canada so the processing time is good so on average it's it's faster than any other program and other than that because it's the federal program you are open to any any province you pick to leave so you don't need to apply to province and then move to another province you remember about new brunswick program i mentioned there is hundred thousand security deposit if you leave the province if you don't do the business in the province uh, so for this, because it's a federal program, there is no such a thing. And one more thing is um, you don't need to create job. You should have the intention to do that, but it's not mandatory. So you don't need to create job for Canadians based on the agreement or something you signed by the government. That's actually it's, it's a great advantage of this program because uh, creating job for Canadians means paying salary you know and then that cannot be your family member yourself you need to hire someone in Canadian or a PR resident in Canada finally uh, you don't need to invest mm -hmm. because in under any entrepreneur program a provincial one uh, you must invest some certain amount of money and yeah it's just the idea or if you are lucky enough you can get the fund from angel investors or venture capitals and if you are not then simply you get lots of support from business incubators so at the end no minimum investment no job creation and then IELTS. IELTS itself is just a five. It's not difficult to get IELTS five. And you're not bound to stay in the province. Yeah. And the most interesting part about this program is it's not the point-based system. You are not competing with any other participants. Okay, it's just a criterion based. So you get the letter of support, you are fine. Even your age, your education, your IELTS, or uh, language requirement, or, or any, even you are lower than the others, as far as you meet the requirement, you are fine. Oh, okay. So I think at that uh, you can see, but please uh, understand, you should not engage in any activity like somehow lead to immigration fraud if someone comes to you say okay i have a, a ready business plan for you and I'm, I'm going to sell it to you and then you can use it and get the letter of support you crossing line mm -hmm. this is a fraud you don't want to jeopardize it yeah no don't do that if you have they're just the idea hire some professional and they, they can help you to make your idea happen. I mean, to, to change the idea to the design and then the, the product, then it can happen. So you don't need to fabricate anything. Thanks for listening to another episode of YLG Canada Immigration Podcast with Afshin Yazdani. You can get more information on immigration to Canada from ylgpc.ca. We're trying to make this show more interactive, so please feel free to send us your questions at podcast at ylgpc.ca. Take care. Everybody.